exciting new research looking at the parts of the brain that are activated when we play games. And I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the research, but I just want to give you the, uh, the, the I'll tell you the dramatic findings right away. Um, the parts of the brain that light up when we play video games are the same parts of the brain that shut down when we're depressed. The parts associated with motivation, determination, learning and memory, games activate them. When we're depressed, they shut off. It's pretty fascinating. And um, so I want to show you a game that was created, particularly to kind of test this research. Um, here's footage of the game. See if you can figure out what's going on in the game. It's a little bit of an unusual game. Can you see uh, what the players are trying to do? So it looks kind of like a standard fantasy shooter game. Um, but if you look closely, you can see this is being played in the environment of a human body. And the weapons are chemotherapy weapons. And what's being destroyed is cancer. Um, this is a game called Remission. And it was created for young people who've been diagnosed with leukemia. And the goal of the game developers was actually to improve treatment outcomes, to make kids who played this game more likely to survive cancer, to go into remission, which is a pretty lofty goal for a game. Um, but here's what they found out. They ran clinical trials, and they found out that kids who played this game for as little as two hours had much higher chemotherapy adherence. Now, this means they took the drugs that helped them beat cancer more regularly than kids who had not played the game. Um, this is really important. Kids with leukemia have to take these oral drugs for two or three years. And 83% of the cases of cancer that come back that don't get cured, 83% of those cases are associated with missing doses of your chemotherapy drugs. So if you can avoid missing doses, you're almost statistically guaranteed to beat this disease when you're young and you have leukemia. So the fact that a game could help these young kids not miss doses meant that they were more likely to survive this illness. And it wasn't just that they were interviewing parents or interviewing the players and saying, you know, did you definitely remember to take these drugs? They measured the levels of the chemotherapy agents in their bloodstream for six months after they played the game. And six months later, kids who had played this game for as little as two hours had 20% higher levels of the cancer-fighting drugs in their bloodstream than kids who had not played the game.